Definitely inspirational today to get that quote from a man that really had such profound words to say, but yes, desire is all that you need. Now, with all the coronavirus news, absolutely dominating every conversation that we're having. We thought to bring you some hope after the dust has settled a bit. Now we're chatting all things about getting back into the job market and it can start at a very young age. Now with the continuing rise of uh, mechanization, we're seeing a continual loss of jobs that had existed for decades. We're being pushed to adapt to the new world of work and to learn new skills in order to stay relevant. But what skills will be most wanted in the future? And that is a question that we're asking today. And how can parents help their children prepare for that future? Now, registered counsellor Shinaz Moors joined us in studio to talk exactly about this. Good morning, Shinaz. Yeah, good morning. I feel more like an economist than a registered counsellor. <laughs> we are just, dabbling into just that preparing, a preparing bit. for for today's session. It was quite intense. The things that I learned and also tied quite well in with what I actually do because what are the key skills you were saying will be needed exactly. was emotional intelligence, exactly, which isn't actually taught at school. Yeah. Um, so they, there lies quite a bit of a dilemma. And I feel like with a uh, nowadays pressurised sense of parenting mm. where you not only have to make sure that, you know, while your child is in utero, you're taking all the right kind of vitamins in order to make sure that you give them the best <laughs> chance of having the healthiest body. And then once they're done, you've got to breastfeed them and then yes. you've got to make sure they're healthy. Now, the challenge of preparing them for the future is very, very real. So in light of, you know, the fast-changing mm. job landscape out there, how, how do you think parents can best help their children plan for the future and be ready for the workforce? Yeah, one of the things that needs to be, I think, changed a little bit or adaptability is what is meant to be taught for, for children to be more resilient as adults one day. Because you find that with each generation, we're getting this, a more sense of entitlement mm. about wanting to go into entry-level jobs with high salaries mm. and benefits that someone has after working for five years. They want on entry into a position. So this is what we are raising, you know? <laughs> so for me, and the education system is then also not giving the right skills. So with parenting and education combined, we're not creating the 20 or 30 employees that we actually need. Hmm. What are some of the career paths or jobs that we now see that will be sustainable for the future and that is more likely to grow and help uh, with our kids? Future? Okay, so um, wh what I found was everyone, we all know what's going on. I don't want to go down that road. Mm -hmm. But there was an interview on, um, the other night and the guy said that the fourth industrial revolution, we were on the cusp of it. But with everything that's happened, it may come to us sooner. And that means your artificial intelligence. So not everybody can do IT or coding or design an app, but you need to find a way that you fit in alongside what's actually going to happen because certain jobs aren't going to exist anymore. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, so you talked about adaptability mm. being one of those key skills and I'd like you to just maybe expand a bit more on how you teach your child to be adaptable mm, and perhaps yeah. some other key elements that are very important. I think one of the key things to teach adaptability is to let children make mistakes. Hmm. that failure, failure has built in growth into it. But we, as the new age parents, don't like our children to suffer or make mistakes. So even as babies, we come to their rescue. They want to crawl towards something, but we quickly go and get it for them or move them towards it. So these hmm. skills start at birth already, that working towards goals. Um, the other thing is that instant, this whole instant gratification kind of planet yeah. that we're on, mm -hmm. that children need to have to work towards bigger goals. Um, and adaptability is the ability to change when you can see your goals are not happening, mm. to be flexible and readjusting focus and whatever you're doing to think clearly, okay, this one need to do problem solving, OMG, problem solving. Um, I find myself teaching adults problem solving. Mm -hmm. So how can we expect children to understand problem solving? Because wow. it's not really taught. And not like maths problem solving, I'm talking like the skill, the tool problem solving, because they're clear steps. So if we teach children these things, we're kind of setting them up for success, irrespective of the career path that yeah. they choose. Wow, very important information for uh, all of us as parents on the couch, and I'm sure for you at home as well. I think about uh, every time that Phoenix wants to get onto his little plastic motorbike and then he can't necessarily get on and he wants help, and I sometimes just leave him to cry mm. and figure it out. You'll get on okay. at some point, figure out, hold both handles and swing your leg <laughs> over. How difficult could it yeah. be? <laughs> but of course, we'll continue our conversation uh, with Shanaz a little bit later on. Uh, be sure to throw some questions at us on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show, SA. BC3. It's my feel good
incredible day to celebrate your birthday uh, with the likes of your Mama Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Happy birthday to you, Mama. But we carry on our conversation uh, with, of course, Shanaz Moose uh, regarding mamas, papas and their children and about how to prepare them for the future in uh, the working uh, working industries and exactly what skills we need to have, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of personality traits you might need to kind of work on in order to make you a success in the future. Thanks again, once again, for joining us, Shanaz. We spoke about it like it's a a lot of changes coming through, a lot of jobs are, you know, dying out, maybe so. But what do you see? What what are some of the jobs that you see? What are the, some of the industries that you see a lot of children hoping to go into that is sadly dying out? Not to discourage anyone, but what is, that is sadly dying out. Um, you know, like when, when I'm, I'm not going to give my age away, but it's many decades, close to half a century actually, <laughs> um, there I gave it away. Uh, they were like standard careers you were sort of primed for. Your medicine, your law, you know, uh, pharmacy, anything that yes. engineering, and then it shifted to IT, and I think IT and anything to do with programming software, that is like why schools are teaching coding as well, mm -hmm. from as young as grade R, some schools have introduced, and some children have an aptitude for it, yeah. and others just find it hard. Yeah. So for me, that the careers that are like going to blossom are linked to artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, and the ones that aren't going to exist, a lot of manual, um, sort of manual related, like working in assembly line where the person's working, or a warehouse like Google or whichever that do delivery, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Amazon, Amazon, whatever, that yeah. have giant warehouses, they are trying to use robots mm. to do the stacking, sorting, um, fast food industry as well. Mm -hmm. So your orders are being taken by robots, human looking robots. Your kitchen staff is still human for now, yeah. but things are changing. It's not happening here. We can't see it. But everywhere else already, human jobs that are more efficiently done by non-humans mm. just makes business sense. Now, when you say that, it gets me thinking about interpersonal skills and how mm. important or unimportant those yeah. might be in a future where your interaction let's say 80% of it might be with machines. Um, do, do you think that we're going into a future where that might be the case, where we lay less emphasis on interpersonal skills because um, we don't have to interact so much in the working environment with other people? I think that it's quite contrary. I think that the interpersonal skills become vital, more vital in terms of you can't get a human element through an artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So people who excel at interpersonal relationships, communication, that human connection, yes. you know, someone that makes eye contact, that's a good listener, those are important skills to have, yes, <laughs> to have, you know, look into my soul <laughs> kind of thing. And you realize that a lot of people don't like making eye contact. They are mm. very self-conscious about it. And I mean, this is a parenting skill. We must look into our kids' eyes when we speak to make them yeah. feel seen. So when you teach your child the skill of I see you, they are able to look other people in the eye. Wow. Um, I know culturally sometimes that isn't always acceptable depending wow. on the culture, but in the work world, you know, human skills and the, the desire to connect with another person will still be needed. Wow. That they can't teach the robots that. That's true. Mm. The one thing they can't do, no matter how human they make them look, Th they can't do that part. Yeah. Wow. Shanaz, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I think that's probably one of the most important tips that you can take from this conversation, that at the end of the day, uh, we are still living in a world that is run by humans, so maintaining those human connections, mm. being able yeah. to read things like body language, understanding emotions, and having that human connection is what might make you very successful in the future versus any other thing. And of course, if you're looking for more advice, you can go to happyconfidentme.co.za. That's where Shanaz is.